it's what ten, tennis coach Nick Bola Thierry calls the centipede effect. If a centipede had to think about moving all its legs in the right order, it would freeze. The task too complex and daunting. The same is true of humans. Red is what Suvorov called the dark. It is that fixated negative content loop of self-judgment, rigidity, aggression, shutdown, and panic. Blue is what he called the light, a deep calmness in which you are on task, in the zone, on your game, in control, and in flow. It applies to the military. It applies to sport. It applies to business. In the heat of battle, the difference between the inhibitions of the red and the freedom of blue is the manner in which we control our attention. Works like this. Where we direct our mind is where our thoughts will take us. Our thoughts create an emotion. The emotion defines our behavior. Our behavior defines our performance. So simply, if we can control our attention and therefore our thoughts, we can manage our emotions and enhance our performance, which is easier said than done. Typical pressure zones are times of great heat, where something is at stake, where trauma of previous experience is triggered, where there is conflict, aggression, dispute, dissent, where there is a deadline, a ticking clock, urgency, where there is high stimulus and distraction. In these kinds of situations, an impossible deadline at work, for instance, or the final seconds of the knockout stages of the, a rugby world cup, how do we control our attention? How do we stay present? Remain resourceful, keep on task. How do we avoid the red and stay in the blue? State changing, says Wayne Smith, is really critical. Graham Henry saw it as one of the key factors in his team's eventual triumph. Having skills to go from red to blue or maintain the blue was pretty important in the scheme of things. He says, I think says Gilbert Anoka, that anyone in our arena who looks at performance and looks at improvement, it's all about a state shift and ensuring that you can get your head into a good place. For Richie McCaw, it's about avoiding what he describes in the real McCaw as fight, flight, or freeze. He wants to avoid, he says, the bad experience pictures from the past or fear of future consequences. In the language of neuro-linguistic programming, his preferred representational system that is the way he processes and retains information is predominantly visual. Throughout the real McCall, he consistently uses visual description to describe his symptoms of stress, exercising the strongest will in the world to keep the bad pictures at bay. They're seeing better than me. And recognizing his triggers, bad pictures, and controlling his attention, keeping the bad pictures at bay, he is able to stay in the present, remain clear, accurate, and on task. For other people, the triggers might be more auditory. Think of the reaction of an Iraq veteran suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder to a car backfiring. For others, it will more it will more kinesthetic the feeling of walking into a crowded room. A certain smell such as Marcel Proust Madeleine cakes. In fact, though we have all our preferred representational system. We also have all the embedded auditory, visual, and kinesthetic triggers. The trick is to recognize when they are firing in our brains and when the effect is negative. We need to recognize the red flags, the warning sirens, our sixth sense. Then we have to manage our reactions. The brain essentially has three parts, instinct, thinking, and emotion. Anoka told Gregor Paul the New Zealand Herald, Invariably under pressure, it is the thinking that shuts down, and that means you are relying on emotion and instinct. It can no longer pick up the cues and information and make good decisions. He says if you become disconnected, then you can focus on outcome and not task, and the ability to make good decisions is compromised. The Real McCall describes the work that Siri Evans did with the players to help them reconnect. Like meditation, it begins with the breath. Breathing slowly and deliberately, shift your attention to something external, the ground or your feet, or the ball at hand, or even alternating big toes or the grandstand. Use deep breaths and keywords to get out of your own head. Find an external focus, get yourself back in the present, regain your situational awareness. 
These actions are anchors, and they have a particular function. They are designed to bring the players into the moment, into clarity, into the blue. It is easy to see how this technique is applicable to a pressurized business environment. Essentially, it works like this. First, we put ourselves in a resourceful state, calm, positive, clear. Then we anchor that state through a specific replicable physical action, something out of the ordinary like scrunching up our toes, stamping our foot, staring into the distance, throwing water over our face. Repeat and repeat and repeat until it's automatic. Then when we recognize the symptoms of pressure, when our focus closes down, our vision narrows, our heart rate lifts, our anxiety increases, our self-consciousness rises, we can use the anchor to reboot and return to our center. Like a doctor using pedals on a cardiac arrest, the jolt of recognition reactivates our more resourceful state and returns us to the moment. It is literally recognition. Thinking again, undiverted, we're free to assess, adjust, and act. To become realigned with our task and the best way to complete it. To act rather than react. What do pilots do when they're crashing? Gazing beds, Brosnahan asked before answering his own question. They look at the manual. He's joking, he says, but it's a good way to anchor the gazing performance system's mythology. Gazing, he explains, develop maps for their clients, simple schematics that clarify the issues and provide an easily recalled point of reference in pressure situations. Maps force clarity, he says. You can't put bullshit on a map. In high-performing domains, he says, people have the same maps, the same common language. This common language, whether, whether a schematic, words, phrases, or mantras, delivers clarity. If you have a direction you want to go in, if you can describe it succinctly and clearly, that's your starting point, he says. The map is not the terrain, but it sure helps when you get a little lost. And maps exist on many levels. Visual mnemonics of the sort that gazing uses. Physical triggers of the kind that McGaw explains and words or mantras designed to bring you into the moment. I can still remember them, says Anton Oliver, recalling the playing mantra the All Blacks use in his day. TQB, top quality ball. OTG, over the gain line. KBA, keep the ball alive. And LQB, lightning quick ball. You get these four things going, we're fine. That gave us the template to figure out the game. Originally, the mantra was a word, phrase, or sound with the power to transform. Vedic in origin, the most famous example is Om, the meditative mantra that brings the adept into the moment. Its purpose hasn't changed. Mantras are literally an instrument for thinking, a practical tool for returning to the moment. Pilots, for instance, have a mantra to help them deal with the deluge of flight data that assails them during a crisis. Aviate navigate communicate that is first focus on flying the plane second fly the plane in the right direction third tell people where you're flying the plane it's a simple practical process that has saved lives its simplicity enables pilots to orient themselves and take the right steps in the right order providing big picture perspective and clearly defined steps meanwhile paramedics and ski patrollers have a mantra for first aid situations Assess, adjust, act. That is, assess the situation. Adjust your approach to suit the situation. Act accordingly. Again, the process creates clarity and certainty without losing urgency. The thing many mantras share is the rule of three. That is, there are three words or phrases that work together in a stepwise process to bring about change. The rule of three is the way humans tell stories, with the beginning, a middle, and an end. You'll see it in drama with the three-act play, and jokes with an Englishman, an Irishman, and a Scotsman, and in an orator's rhetoric, Adolf Hitler's In Volk, In Rech, In Fulgad, for instance, or the desire for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, or the Maui proverb, Titiro, Wakarango, Correro, Look, Listen, Then Speak. By harnessing this three-point structure, mantras create a strong linguistic chain of events that take you from chaos to clarity and into action automatically. 
Controlling our attention through anchoring, maps, and mantras is about bringing ourselves back into the present. Rather than what ifs, we are then able to deal with the what is. Rather than what if we run out of resources, we can ask what is the best way to use our resources. Rather than what if I don't win the contract, we can ask what can I do to win the contract. Maps and Mantras allows us to, in Gilbert Anoka's phrase, meet pressure with pressure. That is, rather than feeling it, we can apply it. By controlling our attention, we control our performance. By controlling our performance, we control the game. So fast forward from Cardiff 2007 to Auckland 2011. From a Rugby World Cup quarterfinal to a World Cup final. From a team heading towards defeat to a team heading towards victory. It's the same two sides playing, New Zealand versus France. It's just as tight, but this time New Zealand led by one point. Read the body language. Richie McGaw breathes, holds his wrist, stamps his feet, reconnecting with himself, returning to the moment. He looks around. There are no glazed eyes now, no walking dead. Brad Thorne throws water over himself, cooling his thoughts. Kieran Reed stares out to the far distant edge of the stadium, regaining perspective. New Zealand, the stadium of four million people, is less calm. The dread casts a long black cloud. The spectators can't help but flash back to the bad pictures. They are in the red, but the all-blacks stay in the blue. The clock counts itself down slowly, slowly, until finally the whistle blows. 8-7 to seven, New Zealand. We smashed them, says Graham Henry, and in their heads they did. Keep a blue head. Pressure is expectation, scrutiny, and consequence. It is the curtain coming down, the shutters closing, the red mist rising. It leads to tightening, panic, overaggression, choking, and poor decision-making under pressure. Wise leaders seek to understand how the brain reacts to stress and practice simple, almost meditative techniques to stay calm, clear, and connected. They use maps, mantras, and anchors to navigate their way through highly pressurized situations both personal and professional, and to bring themselves back to the moment. In this way, they and their team stay on top of their game and on top of the situation. These techniques can take us from a volatile, uncertain, and un- an ambiguous space into a place of mental clarity. Clear thought, clear talk, clear task. They are the difference between red and blue, dark and light, failure and success. Keep a blue head. Control your attention. Mate rongo ka mohio, mate movio ka marama, mate marama ka matao, mate matao ka ora. From listening comes knowledge, from knowledge comes understanding, from understanding comes wisdom, from wisdom comes well being. Chapter 10 Authenticity Waka puputia mayao manuka kiakora. Aewati. Cluster the branches of the manuka so that they will not break. Know thyself. Keep it real. We always talk about the real self rather than the fake self, says Gilbert Anoka. If you come into the all blacks and you succumb to peer pressure and you do things because others want you to, if you're not grounded then, you get found out. Anoka uses the analogy of a bridge that is secure because it is made of several different planks. Personal skills, friends, family, being an all black. If the only plank you've got is the rugby one, then you always come unstuck. He explains how the all blacks learn to protect themselves from mental fragility. If you marry the self, the environment, the culture, the rituals, the legacy, and you put these together, you actually weave a pretty powerful fabric that will actually get you through your journey. You may wobble a bit when things go wrong, but you won't actually fracture and crumble. Better people make better all blacks. Know thyself. Often attributed to Socrates, the phrase is even older, inscribed in the inner chamber of Luxor Temple in Upper Egypt. Man, know thyself, the hieroglyphs say, and thou shalt know the gods. To know how to win goes the saying, you first have to know how to lose. For the all blacks to know how to lose, you first have to know who you are. And refusing to be distracted by the clamor of the crowds, the distractions of the day, we can become free to follow our own path. Two, Anoka's words, Anoka's words, be resilient and to stand tall and to keep faith and to stay strong within yourself. Development of the authentic self, he says, 
is hugely powerful to performance.